Hello and welcome. So in this story, I will try and recreate this uh, interior bedroom thing and while exploring it, we'll learn one or two things. So let's begin. I've created the scene already in Revit, my modeling software. You can create it in any software of your choice. And uh, I'll go to my D5 Render plugin and start D5. And it's going to import this view into D5. And uh, we'll go ahead and begin our work. So here we are in D5 and uh, our view has been imported. The first thing we need to do is to set the camera this way. So let's start with camera. So you go to camera settings by clicking on this icon here. And when you are there, the first thing you want to do is to set up a two-point perspective like you can see in the view. Once you're in camera, many of the settings you need for camera, such as the focal length and the field of view is already here. So the next thing to do is to set that up and also to try and mimic the size of our image. So this image is a rectangular image that you might be able to view on your phone or Instagram or stuff like that. So we can easily set that by unchecking the custom and then um, adjusting our height and length to, to give us that rectangular fit. Another thing I want to confirm is your focal length. Here is at 18. It's a small space, so you need a wide angle, but I think maybe 20 might work a little bit just better. Uh, getting an inspiration from an image naturally makes your work faster. So as we can see, this is going on very good. So uh, it mustn't be perfect at, at first glance, but as we go on, we can adjust things that don't look right. So this is okay. The amount of ceiling, floor, and wall looks wonderful. I'll click on create scene to create a new scene. And then I'm going to try and remember this. This is uh, 1.4 by 1780. Sometimes when you save a thing um, with this unchecked, you, it might come back to haunt you if you don't uh, save them properly. So I just saved two cents just to be sure I don't, uh, I won't miss anyone. So after setting up our scene, our camera scene, the next thing is to put in components to composite the scene. This is one of the places where D5 can actually help you to speed up your work. Tapping M, you can go into the model section uh, look for bed. We just have only three free beds. I might just pick any one of them. I really do not care now because I can adjust the color of the components to match the the element I'm trying to create. So I've placed the bed, rotate. If you tap T and uh, alternate two, I guess, and Z, it, it does this three times. It takes you to the top view, it takes you into wireframe mode, and it zooms into the component. And this is wonderful for working because you can easily place your components exactly where you want them on plan. And let's say the sizes need to be adjusted a little bit. You come here and then this 2-2, two, two, I can adjust it to 2,000. And it gets slightly smaller so that it can go in between these two spaces. I'll come back to my 3D view to just check where I place my bed. It looks good. Uh, and it's also looking something like my sample image, so I can make do with that. And let's continue. The next thing is to place two bedside table. Once again, you have components in D5 that can make that very, very easy to do. Now I'm using the free version of D5, and even with that, I have all these components for free. So D5 has very vast library of cabinets and high quality realistic components. So I'll go to cabinets and I'll just select this first one, modern dark brown leather cabinet. I think it's kind of fits into this thing a little bit because it's dark brown also, so, but we'll just manage it. And then, we'll, sorry. I'll click to load it since I'm loading it for the first time. And then remember what I said, you, once you click to place, Tap Z to zoom in. Alternate 2 will take you to wireframe mode and T will take you to top. And if you press Z, you get some to exactly the components you are working with. And then I can rotate this easily. Now pressing V can go between move and scale. This is a very useful shortcut. Well, we are not focusing on it right now. So this is the component. I've placed it here. It seems big. Uh, I can easily scale it. I'll go to my camera view. This is how big is it? It is. Uh, the height is fairly okay. I can easily scale down by clicking on size and uh, maybe scaling different ways. So by unchecking the 
the link button, you can scale these components uh, in different directions, X, Y, Z, and distort it in a way that fits your style. So I'll go to top, I'll go to wireframe mode, and I will zoom into the view. And this allows you to work pretty fast navigating the U D5 interface. Shift and uh, dragging the move button will duplicate the, view the components, and you can have it on both sides. So I've been able to place my bed, my two bedside tables, I've modeled my scenery. Let's continue filling up person. The next thing I want to do is, you know, there is this small decorative flower here and some components there. So we have all this in D5, so you don't need to give the software searching for components. So let's say potted plant. And you can easily search for whatever you are thinking of. Um, in D5, you don't even need to go through a lot of stress. So I, I have about two, three potted plants that are free. I can easily click on this. No matter the size of the component, you don't need to worry. You can see this is a very big sized component. All I need to do is to make sure I place it in the right place. And if you zoom into this component, you discover that the anchor point is at the base. So whenever you are zooming down into the component, whenever you are changing the size or scale, you are not worried that where you place the component, it will move out from there. So that's wonderful. So I'll press V to move, to change it to move, and I place the bedside uh, lamp just here. Good. So even if you are finding it difficult, like I am doing to work on on, on 3D, you can easily go to plan, place your component, rotate it, make sure nothing is interfering with any wall and stuff like that. So this, this is just simple and cheap. Uh, we've done that. I think I'll reduce the size again to, let's say, 450. That's good. I'll find one decorative component to put here. Once again, I go to M. We have so many decorative elements under accessories you can find uh decorative elements these are candle lights there's a statue of buddha stuff like that so i might just use this so i'll use the candle lights and put them on the side of this bed remember you can use v to scale or you can come here and reduce the size of the components okay. so. So in little or no time, we've been able to create our scene and populate the scene. Two more things are left. We need a light from the ceiling and we need curtains for the window and we can proceed to other components. So let me quickly add those. I'm sure we already know how this goes. So I've been able to place uh, a chandelier and then I'll go ahead with the curtains. Now, I think for the curtains in D5, the, the components are still facing the development. So I don't think they are at the best they can be, but we have to make do with them right now. So we have basically three free curtains. I'm going to use curtain 04. And uh, we are unable to change or work on the materials of the cotton in D5. The only thing we can do is to change the materials based on what has been given to us. So either this or you have to create your cotton from the beginning, but I don't want that, so I'm just going to use this. So I've been able to place this cotton. Uh, there are many ways to adjust the cotton and fill. So we have scale. So let's start with size. Uncheck the link tool. Uh, you have to play around with it to know which one we are using. So it's not the Y axis. Uh, it's either the Z. Okay, it's not the Z. It's the X axis. So this can make it you know, longer or thinner. So I need it this way. So this cutting is here. You go to top view, alternate two to go to wireframe mode, zoom to zoom to the cutting, and then shift and drag to copy the cutting uh to other things so the ability to work in d5 for the fact that we can place this on plan makes it very easy so i've been able to place every component in this image in this view in no time now it's not exactly the same but you get the picture the next thing we are going to do is to set up our lighting 
So that's cool. So the next thing to do will be to set up our lighting and then from there we'll proceed to our materials. To work on lighting and material properly, it's always good to work in clay mode. So you go to display and select clay mode and the, all the materials disappear. Then you update your sign to save that clay mode. Now, the first thing I want to do will be to turn off all the lights or lighting fixtures, as the case may be. I'll start with the lights that came in from Revit. Uh, this is the emissive property, so I'll just turn it off. I have this emissive property here, but uh, there are two ways to work with emissive properties. One way is to select them and then say cast shadows. So by this, you take off the ability of the emissive property to affect the lighting in the sign. They are there. They are bright, but they don't affect anything. So I'm just going to reduce this intensity to like uh, seven or there about. So they are, they are present, but they don't affect anything in the sign. Um, once this is done, um, next thing I want to do is to set up the primary source of light. The primary source of light in this scene, you need to study your reference image, is daylight. So this daylight is coming in from this window and it's lighting up the scene. We have some supporting field light, but they don't really add to the brightness of the scene. So this thing just have one major source of light. So let's go. To work on lighting, you must also understand how your camera works. And in D5, the auto exposure is always turned on. So for you to have a good sense to be able to work on lighting, you have to turn off auto exposure. And you can see my scene have just gone dark. Uh, there are one or two other items I want to touch, but auto exposure is the first culprit. Then you go to environment light, which is your source of primary light. And what we'll be looking at to do is either to use geosolar sky or HDRI. For me, I'll prefer to use HDRI because uh, we don't have direct sunlight. So getting the best HDRI is good. So I'm going to just go for clear, uh, cloudy possibly. Cloudy is okay. And then we have some basic settings here on that light. If you increase the skylight, you can see majority, your, your scene will get brighter and uh, both the background light. To also support the setting you are creating, if you have a very strong system, you should always set your display to precise so you can see how bright your skin is. You can go back to your effects and then work on your exposure. Because for you to create a good scene, you need to also know the settings on your camera. So the exposure settings. So this at zero, I want to make it 0 0.5 and see. So this is really bright. So it means that it's, your exposure is too much. Um, I'll take it to 0 0.05 and start from there. So most times when you have deficiency in lighting, you shouldn't go and start tweaking the environment to a very uh, bad end. You should also work on your exposure. So uh, 0 0.1, down 0 0.2. So the, the, scene is, the scene is getting better. The white balance on the scene uh, is a little bit off uh, and the tint, but I might be able to sort this out later on as uh, time goes by. But this, this is fair enough. Um, not as bright as I would like, so I might just make this 0 0.3. Okay. As I continue to work it out, if I see the need to increase this, I'll do that. What I'm trying to avoid when working on my exposure is not to have excessive exposure. So uh, around the window, the, the exposure is excessive, but that's understandable because this is, um, this is a cotton material, but uh, within the internal spaces, the exposure shouldn't be excessive. So this is good. Now, whenever you're working on a sale, you should always update it, especially when you have done some settings, by clicking this update setting button before clicking the camera view. If you if you don't update your scene properly, all your settings will go. So I've set up my primary light. The next light I need to set up will be uh, the decorative lights. So we use IES. We'll go to our lights, add lights, click on spotlight, and uh, position it at the right spot. So. This is excessively bright. I use shift and uh, move to copy, select both of them and reduce the intensity to let's say five. Reduce the, the alternation radius 
to be very minimal. And then um, the cone angle can also be made smaller depending on the effect I want to create. Um, so this, you can see how the intensity of this light is shaping my scene. I can also change, there are different types of IES lights. I can select different types. Uh, this, this looks perfect for the scene. Uh, if I wanted it just a little bit yellow, I can move the temperature down towards uh, 3000 or thereabouts. So I've been able to set up my scene uh, with only the cloud and skylight and um, these two uh, field lights. Something we should always know when working on lighting is that if you are working on lighting, you should turn off your materials and you should turn off every other light in the same before you start working on them one after the other. And also, don't forget, your camera exposure matters a lot when getting a good view for your lighting. So this is that. We are done with our light scene. And the next thing we want to work on would be materials. Before I start my materials, I really don't like this specific channel they are here. I want to get something closer to what we have here. So uh, one way to do that is to go on a 3D warehouse. And then uh, I've seen this particular pendant here, pendant 15 light bulb. I've downloaded it and um, you can import it straight into D5 by clicking this import button here. And this is it here, component number 98. I'm clicking open and it will import it. Once it's in the sale, under imported, you'll find it. You can click on it and um, it's going to load into the sale. It's really big. I'm just going to place it here. Uh, it came in rotated, so I'll rotate it 90 degrees. And um, I'll select this one, delete it. Select this one and under size here, make sure the link is on. I'll scale it down to let's say 1.5. See how small it gets. So this is a little bit okay. I can still make it smaller. I'm going to rotate it so that it faces my view properly, uh, like this. So this sounds good. I'm going to reduce the scale to let's say 900. So this is basically all I've done and then uh, would we'll continue with application of materials from there. So when you have a reference image, it's always important, especially with interiors, to study the materials and the, the, the feel of this view. If you look at this particular bedroom, the beige color is the dominant color, supported by white. White is actually a neutral color. The woody colors also are close to being beige. The beige sheet, everything is a monochromatic image to a certain degree just one major color, and then we have white and black accent in it. So it's important in in designing interiors that you have a taste for um, colors and how they affect an interior space. So I'm going to copy this particular interior exactly as much as I can with understanding of that this is a monochromatic interior uh, color space. Next thing I want to do is to go to the display and turn on material mode. In applying materials, I'm going to start from the top and down. So the first material here will be the white ceiling. Uh, I'll tap in M to begin the, to open the material and model sections. And then um, under materials, online, I'm online right now, I'll type in the uh, white wall paint. And that will bring out three different white wall paints. I'll pick the smoothest one, that is this third one. Um, and then just click and it applies that material. So this is a white wall and that's uh, the material there. The next one here is uh, the beige wall. If you look at this, an off-white wall. I can still apply this white material and later on um, adjust the material to fit. So. Uh, on the right here is also something like a, a, a beard roll also. I'm applying all this material so I can easily edit it. So I've applied both ceiling materials and walls. So let's go ahead and uh, create some edits. So the easiest way to edit uh, colors will be to pick the material using the material picker here. As you pick, click on it, the shortcut is I, and then you can adjust it from the base color 
or from the base color map. But let's start from the base color. So you select this. There is also something good about D5 in the sense that if I pick the base color while it's active and pick this, let me minimize this a little bit. So, so let me minimize this a little bit to explain what I want to do. So let's say, for example, I'm trying to adjust this specific material and then I, I have a color picker, select this particular one, pick, pick on the base color. If I select this particular picker, any imagery, whether it's in D5 or not, that I, I select the color from, it applies it to that material. So you can see that it, it picks this imagery and it applies it to this material. So with that, uh, we can see exactly the kind of material we are working with and maybe making it brighter a little bit can make pretty the edge material. So D5 has the ability to pick colors even outside of the software, which, which is a good thing. So, so I've applied materials to this and I'll, I can pick this material by typing I to select it and O to copy it to this particular point. Um, you can also, in editing this particular material, I want to select it under UV mapping and stretch. If you start with, let's say, 0 0.05, it makes the material uh, texture size bigger. The more you reduce the, the size of uh, the stretch value, the material size becomes bigger. So I've been able to apply these materials. The lighting fixture has a material combination of white and black, and that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. So um, I'm going to use the material picker to pick the existing material. And then I'm going to set this base color all the way down to black. And uh, make sure that it has a feel of metal. On the metallic tab, uh, you can click and let me make it one. One is the highest figure. So I can, let's say one, 0 0.5, reduce this, make it more specular, you know, give it this material feel. Then for the glass ball, we we'll use the material picker again, make sure it's active, select it. Now, take it to custom because actually it's looking like a transparent material and put the color to white. This particular material here is going to be black. So the material picker enables us to pick material and the inspector tab here enables us to quickly um, edit those material. Once those materials are in, um, they are in custom, like under the material template, you can easily do that. There are different types of material templates for water, for flowing water, for car paint, for clothes, you know, they have different materials for it. So I've been able to apply materials to the walls and ceiling. We'll continue to the wooden slates beside uh, the bed, which is just slightly darker in, in color than this. So I'm going to pick, use the material selector to select it. And if you if you are if you're a bit lazy like me, you can just go to your base color and try picking the color of the image you are referencing. So if I click on my base color, pick up, click on this color picker, I can go to the specific image I'm referencing and um, try picking it till I get something close to uh, what I might be looking for. So I'm not even applying wooden material, I just use the color and it's almost like what I need. So if you have a reference material, you can easily pick off materials off your reference material without so much uh, stress and worry and it comes out very nice. The next thing is the matras, the, the matras and the colors there, because I'm trying to maintain a very chromatic, monochromatic view. So we'll still try and do stuff like that. So let me see if I can uh, put this view here, uh, this one. Okay, so I want to put my 3D reference image 
very close to my DeFi file so that if I wanted to pick uh, any reference pictures from there, it's easier for me. So we'll start with the mattress and I want to change. That's another good thing about DeFi file that these models, you can easily adjust the materials individually. I hope in the future we'll be able to do that for the content. So let's begin. I'll use the material picker to pick this head. Uh, this is the base color. I can pick this, select this base color. Uh, there is already a color map here. And we can see this color map uh, is the material map already. And so um, what we might want to do is to one way to go about it is to invert it. When you invert it, you make, the, you make that particular material brighter from where it goes to. And uh, the base color map might also come in. So this, this looks good and uh, we'll continue like that. So the last material I want to apply will be the floor tiles. So I'll save this particular one tile, floor 26. It looks much like what we have in our reference image. So I clicked on top and uh, I can slightly just adjust that. So the first thing I want to do is to rotate the material, not the element. So you select the material and here with under UV, you rotate the UV mapping by 90 degrees. And uh, this is okay. The next thing that I want to do is maybe through the base color, just make it a little bit uh, brighter uh, of some sort. Also increase the circular, let's say to one point to zero point two five, and maybe reduce the roughness a little bit. So I've been able to apply materials. Now I have to go back to my same by same two. You notice it's still in clay mode, so I need to update this sign. I'll go to camera view. Uh, just to see if uh, my camera is still within the right settings I left it initially. Um, I need to always adjust this because for some reason when you set this up in um, D5 Render, sometimes you come back and just notice that things are not the way you left it. So I'm going to use the keys to just adjust this a little bit. I'm sure I can see the slab the ceiling, you know, just exactly how my reference image was initially. I'll update my scene again, and then click on display, take it to uh, the normal mode, and also update my scene again. One thing I want to ensure is to make sure that my white is white, because if you look at my scene right now, uh, the effect makes everything seem to be uh, gray, but this is supposed to be white. So I'm going to uh, just update this view again and then go check out just one or two materials. So I use the material inspector, the shortcut is I, select it, ensure this is white, um, make it brighter if I need to, just to make sure it's white. Uh, the base color also is white, that's good. So it's more white than else. Once I've finish this setting to a good level like I've done now. The next thing is to go ahead and set up the render. So I'll go over to Sync 2 and go over to Camera. So this is okay. I'm going to update my view. Um, every other thing here looks fine. Uh, the channels, you can click and decide what channels you want to export uh, for Post production. So after all those setups and uh, getting the view I want and the range of my image, I want to render a 2K image. So I'll put it at 2000 by 2149. This view is very much like a reference image. And um, using this reference image, I've been able to learn a lot about uh, interior lighting, also about um, application of materials and colors. So with this, there are two ways to render. You can add it to the render queue. And you, or you can decide to just click the render button like I did initially and um, just want to render this view again and cut some more views and do some animation.
So thanks for watching. This is our end result on the right and uh, where we started from on the left. And um, I hope you learned one or two. Leave a like and uh, catch you in the next video. Thanks. Peace.